Forty here. There's a great new song out there that I think everyone can get behind. It's called uh, "Try That in a Small Town." So if you're not on board with the globalist agenda, if you're not on board with you know one you know dominant liberal left ethic, just running your life and obliterating what makes small communities and traditional commitments attractive all right if you're not on board with that then you should love this song by jason aldean man try that in a small town right sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk yeah try that in a small town and see how far you get carjack an old lady at a red light see see how far you get pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store think it's cool well act a fool if you like cuss out a cop spit in his face stomp on the flag and light it up yeah you think you're tough well try that in a small town see how far you make it down the road if you're part of any traditional religious community such as an orthodox synagogue or traditional church all right all right uh, you've got that small town ethos wherever you go even if you're in beverly hills or manhattan so yeah try that in a small town see how far you make it down the road right around here we take care of our own you cross that line it won't take long for you to find out I recommend you don't. So try that in a small town, right? Try that in a small town. Try, try grooming kids in a small town, right? Try writing your phone number, scrolling your phone number, right, on public restroom walls, right? Try, like, having random gay sex in public facilities, public restrooms, in public parks in a small town, right? That stuff might fly in a city. Good luck. Trying that in a small town. See how far you get. I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town. Because around here, we take care of our own. So you cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. But try that stuff in a small town. All right? Try grooming kids in a small town. Try, you know, random anonymous gay sex in public restrooms, public parks. Try that stuff in a small town. All right, got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're going to round up. Well, that stuff might fly in the city. Good luck. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. Cross that line. It won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town. Full of good old boys, raised up right. If you're looking for a fight, try that in a small town. Try that in a small town. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. You cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town, all right? Try grooming kids in a small town, all right? Try hitting on kids in a small town. Try, uh, you know, hitting on blokes. If you're a bloke in a, in a small town, all right, Who, who's not asking for it, is not looking for it. Try pulling that stuff in a bar in a small town. Try, you know, pushing the Globo Homo in a small town. Try desecrating the flag, desecrating the cross. Try desecrating the symbols of traditional America. Try that in a small town. See how far down the road you get. See if you can confiscate our guns. See how far you get. I recommend you don't. Right, this is a fantastic song. And, of course, they don't like it in the elite media. And uh, apparently one of the reasons they don't like it was that the music video was sought on a site where at some point in history there was a, a lynching. So, my God, if there's ever something bad that ever happened on a particular piece of property, then nobody should ever be able to use it ever again, not for any kind of right-wing traditional conservative cause, right? So, God forbid that that, that happens because uh, something, something bad happens in a place, then uh, conservatives can never use that place. So the, uh, the Washington Post, you'll be glad to know, is uh, on the story, right? The outrage over try that in a small town. Small town, explained. Accusations explain of racism prompted a Thank country God. music channel to pull the video, which is set at the site of an infamous lynching and race riot. 
Yeah, well, well, I, I'm not too favorably disposed towards this country music channel that, that uh, cucks to the Globo Homo and pulls down Try That in a Small Town, which is just a fantastic song. And good on Jason Aldean. I hope he doesn't cuck, doesn't back down over his number one new music video, number one song, Try That in a Small Town, which combines news footage of Black Lives Matter protests, violence and crime with lyrics such as Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. So, yeah, try Black Lives Matter protests in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. But Republicans are embracing Aldine. Country music star Jason Aldine is facing immense backlash over his new music video, Try That in a Small Town, which combines news footage of Black Lives Matter protests, violence, and crime with lyrics such as Try that in a small town, slash see how far ya make it down the road, slash around here, we take care of our own. Got a gun that my granddad gave me, slash they say one day, they're gonna round up, slash well, that s, might fly in the city, slash good luck. A channel devoted to country music videos has pulled the video out of rotation after accusations that it promotes racism and violence. But try that in a small town has- Right, right, preserving your traditional way of life, all right, protecting your city, all right, not being thrilled with Black Lives Matter terrorism, like not being down- with uh, people grooming your kids, right? And uh, that's, that's racism, guys. That's uh, a call to violence because y- you don't want uh, people grooming your kids, man. It's also leaped to the top of many streaming charts, and top Republicans are defending Aldine, who insists the song has nothing to do with race. 1. The music video features Black Lives Matter imagery. Aldine released the song in May, but started facing widespread criticism after the music Wow, so uh, apparently, like, Black Lives Matter terror protests are just equivalent to uh, racism, all right? If you're not down with terror protests that unleash a massive wave of murder, you are the racist. Thank you, Washington Post. Music video hit YouTube last Friday. The video is made up largely of news clips showing protests, riots, and police confrontations in cities, at least some of which took place during Black Lives Matter demonstrations. Yeah, try pulling that Black Lives Matter groomer stuff in a small town and see how far down the road you get, Buster. ...prompted by police killings. Other clips show an attempted convenience store robbery and other apparent crimes. Yes, try pulling that in a small town. Try disrespecting the police. Try disrespecting tradition. Try disrespecting America. Try disrespecting the flag. Right? Try disrespecting the, their traditional family. Yeah, try that in a small town, groomer. These alternate with shots of Aldine and his band performing in the public square of Columbia, Tennessee, population about 45,000. Cuss out a cop, spit in his face slash stomp on the flag and light it up slash yeah, you think you're tough, he sings, and at another point. Try that in a small town slash full of good ol boys, raised upright slash if you're looking for a fight. After two minutes of violent images, the video concludes with a brief montage of grainy footage depicting peaceful townspeople and their crops and families. 2. The Maury County Courthouse was the site of a lynching. Some who accuse the video of racism point to its setting in downtown Columbia, the site of historical acts of violence against black people. Aldine's performance backdrop is the Maury County Courthouse, which at times appears to be on fire as images of burning American flags are projected onto it. It's the same building where a mob hanged 18-year-old Henry Choate from the balcony in 1927. The teen had been accused of attacking a white girl who never identified him as her assailant, and whose mother begged the mob to let him stand trial. Columbia is also the site of an infamous 1946 race riot that nearly resulted in the lynching of future Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. This small town full of good OL boys, as Aldine sings, is in his home state of Tennessee, which was scandalized in the 1990s by an annual law enforcement gathering called the Good OL Boys Roundup that featured racial slurs and a simulated lynching. While Aldine highlighted Columbia and its courthouse in a behind-the-scenes feature, the music video's producers say he didn't choose the location, which they portrayed as innocuous. The production company Tacklebox said in a statement to the Washington Post that the video was shot at a popular filming location outside of Nashville that has also been featured in the Lifetime movie Step In Into the Holiday and Disney's Hannah Montana, the movie. Both movies were filmed in Columbia, according to local news reports. The Tennessee Entertainment Commission did not respond immediately to a request for comment. So you're probably wondering, how did the review react to Jason Aldean's song, Try That in a Small Town? Too far. 
The View hosts are weighing in on Jason Aldean's controversial new song, Try That in a Small Town. On Thursday, Whoopi Goldberg, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Alyssa Farrah Griffin discussed the backlash surrounding the polarizing track and its music video. There's a lot wrong here with this. This is a man who saw what happens when someone is out of control right. with their guns. Yeah. He's, He's someone for he was, he was out in Vegas, Vegas and he was he saw people get so I don't understand how he could be that disconnected, how people around him didn't say to him, Hey, listen, you know what? Yeah, my God, if, if guns are ever misused, then we uh, we just have to give up all guns. Like People die in car accidents. People misuse cars. Do we need to give up all cars? People misuse trains, planes, and automobiles. Do we have to give up trains, planes, and automobiles? People misuse Jesus. People misuse Torah. People misuse everything. So we have to give it up. People misuse sex. Right? There's rapists out there, man. There's rape. We have to give up sex, guys. Maybe there's a better way to do this. While Sarah and Joy focused on the tune's lyrics related to small towns and big cities, Alyssa said she was going to give the country star the benefit of the doubt. This was, to me, something where about half the people might like see it one way and half the people might like see it a different way. So I'm trying to, like, kind of see what are we disconnecting on. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that his intent wasn't to, you know, stoke division, glorify violence, or racism. I'm going to give him that benefit of the doubt. I don't know. But I'll say this. There was a line. So for many folks who are funny by this, there's a line in it that says, try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. So for a lot of my friends and family who are legal gun owners in small communities, they're like, yeah, that's what we do. Someone breaks into a store. He's talking the right to defend yourself. What I thought of when I read that, read that was Ahmaud Arbery. I think of a black man in a small town in the South who literally just got shot for doing nothing wrong. So I think what becomes problematic is that there's a rec there's a lack of recognition of what this means to about 50% of the country who's experienced. Yeah, this isn't about just uh, shooting up people who've done nothing wrong. The song is obviously about protecting yourself against groomers and creeps and terrorists. Isn't Jason Aldean. But Sonny didn't agree. I'm actually not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm Pleased that you are, and well, I'm you, pleased you, that you, you are. do agree that he should be allowed to say right? whatever because he wants. I, as a lawyer, when I put my legal hat on, yeah, okay. I don't believe in censorship. Right. However, this man is from Macon, Georgia. My father's from Augusta, Georgia, and Macon, Georgia. I both? spent many summers there. Yeah, both. I spent many summers mm -hmm. there. It is one of the most racist places in this country. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that he knew nothing I'm about what that imagery meant and what he. Uh, so I don't give him the benefit. But I'm saying, I don't along with him, more people out. should the also other, be. The other held thing is, try that in a small town's lyrics include quote, "Got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're gonna round up. Well, that might fly." in a city, good luck. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. You cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town. The music video features videos of looting, protests, and images of burning the American flag. Jason took to Instagram to respond to the backlash earlier this week, saying that the intention of the song was to refer to the feeling of community and people taking care of their neighbors, quote, regardless of differences of background or beliefs. In the past 24 hours, I have been accused... Okay, let's uh, look at some other reactions to this Jason Aldean song. Uh, try that in a small town. What you're probably wondering, first of all, is how, how's the black community reacting to Jason Aldean? Try that in a small town. My damn buddy. Hey, man, what he made? Dirt Road Anthem? I that mean, is I, my I, shit. I'm never supposed to I get that. I'm playing that every week. Chilling on the dirt road. Laid back, swerving like George Jones. Smoke blowing out the window. A nice cold beer sitting in the console. Memory lane is a mini headlines. Got me reminiscing about the good times. Oh, this motherfucker. Bang it, boy. Okay, so what's been going on? Now, Are they really trying really to cancel really Jason? Like, they said this song incites violence. They he talking about all that woke stuff going they on. They heard the last slime me told. He said, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, so they said this. That's in our community. He talking about all that woke stuff going on. He said, try it in the small town. I was just at the gym in the sauna. I was. <laughs> so music down today, man. So so they hot from him saying something like this, and they like, murder baby, green guy. I mean, I put well, a six in the pocket and gave me an IXC. They put that on TV. They're though. feeding us to that. They're feeding that music to our community. So uh, okay, very thoughtful reaction there. Let's see some Yo. more. Yeah, back at it, guys. Like What's a going on, guys? back at it, like a fresh weave, like a wig turned backwards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. So. <clears throat> You know, it's been a big talk about this song, man. It's, I, I know it's probably real, like, really blew them up, but even more so because he was already a big country singer. But um, the Jason Aldean tried that in the small. Okay, let's uh, let's see something else here. What do we got? What do we got? Hey, Champagne Radio Show. Welcome back, I Love Music Army. How we doing? We doing good out there? All right, we hope so. Uh, we are so glad to do it, but we're going to rate the song at the very end. If you're part of the I Love Music Army, you already know. We can't, we can't be playing music there. We'll get, uh, we'll get into copyright trouble. So, all right, let, let me get back here. Washington Post article. And 
The company emphasized that Aldine did not choose the location and said any alternative narrative suggesting the music video's location decision is false. 3. Aldine defends Try That in a Small Town. The singer, however, has stood by the song and its video. In the past 24 hours I have been accused of releasing a pro-lynching song and was subject to the comparison that I, direct quote, was not too pleased with the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests, Aldine tweeted Tuesday. These references are not only meritless, but dangerous. There is not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it, and there isn't a single video clip that isn't real news footage, and while I can try and respect others to have their own interpretation of a song with music, this one goes too far. Aldine also noted that he survived a mass shooting at the Route 91 Harvest Festival in Las Vegas in 2017, in which dozens were killed and hundreds injured. Our community recently suffered another heartbreaking tragedy, he tweeted. And a okay, anyway, I think this, this song is awesome. All right, uh, try that in a small town. And we, we're talking about very different conceptions of the self, right? People on the liberal left, they want to leave, uh, you know, violence entirely to the state, while people on the traditional end of the spectrum are much more down with uh, people having the ability to defend themselves. The people on the liberal left, they believe in a buffered identity that if there are groomers next door, if there are you know, all sorts of different uh, sexual deviants next door, that doesn't necessarily affect you because they believe in the Buffett identity where no matter what's going on around you, it doesn't have to affect you. There's no such thing as moral or spiritual pollution. But people in small towns, right, people with a traditional conception of life, we, we believe that uh, we don't lead Buffett identities, but instead what's going on with you is going to affect me and vice versa. What's going on next door is going to affect me, that, that uh, no man is an island. So people on the liberal left, they believe much more in courtier morality where you weigh everything that you say and do against how it affects everybody else. While people with a traditional perspective on life much more likely to believe that each man's home is his castle and that he should have the right to essentially say what he wants, even if uh, strangers and acquaintances and uh, other people get offended. So very different conceptions of the self. So... People with a traditional perspective, all right, uh, they tend not to be so on board with gay liberation, right? People who are part of traditional Judaism, traditional Christianity, all right, not really on board with gay liberation. And people who are on board with gay liberation, obviously, they're not going to be on board with Christianity and Judaism, which have long traditions discouraging, you know, men on men sex. So try in a small town doing the practices that got these men by Bondi Beach into great trouble, even cost them their lives. Like, try scrawling your phone number on the walls of public lavatories in a small town. Right? Try having sex in a public park in a public lavatory in a small town. Like, try having you know, random gay sex in a cathedral or in a church in, in, on the town square in a small town. Right? I don't think you're going to get far. Now, you may say, oh, these people in a small town... They, they, they're not so rational, all right, their, their assertions aren't so accurate, their, their arguments aren't so cogent, their, you know, their, their wisdom prescriptions are not so wise. I mean, people in small town are ordinary Americans. I'm thinking this great book by a philosopher, Ronnie Goodman, Conservative Claims of Cultural Oppression, The Nature and Origins of Conservophobia. Right? To, to criticize people in small towns intellectually is to commit a category error, like, as it is to criticize, say, Tea Party conservatism. Right? Tea Party anger is not ultimately driven by intellectual arguments and cannot be brought to an end through intellectual arguments. Right? They may have objections to this or that federal program that may be less than cogent, but these ostensible issues are secondary. Right? What's really going on here is you see in small town America the anarchic will of free men, of ornery men, which the elites are hell bent on extirpating, but which the populist conservative would defend at all costs. Right? Uh, people in small towns, particularly. They, they believe that they should have the right to educate their children as they wish, that they should be able to influence uh, public schools so that uh, teachers and uh, gay act activists don't get the opportunity to, to groom kids. So people in small towns and people with a traditional perspective are not so much wanting to destroy modern society, but they want to take on the very organized affect structure that emerges out of it, the, the properly ordered sociability of the buffered liberal left identity. So conservatives, traditionalist people in small town, they, they want 
a life that is less compromised by the liberal left sociability's demands. They want a life that's less rationalized, less intellectualized, less disengaged, right? They want to go back to human nature's default and more authentic form of consciousness. But people on the left, right, they insist that the town, small towns not be left as they are. They have to be badgered. They have to be bullied. They have to be pushed. They have to be preached at. They have to be drilled. They have to be organized to abandon their lax and disordered folkways and conform to these various features of buffered civil liberal left behavior. Right? So people in a small town, they resist all this liberal left badgering and bullying. Right? So they see people on the liberal left as tyrants and usurpers and crypto fascists who are always scheming to undermine the natural liberty of the conservative. Well, you know, try this in a small town. Try badgering people in a small town with the globo homo agenda. Try bullying people to accept grooming in a small town. I don't think you're going to get far down the road. Try pushing people to celebrate you know, the, the gay and trans life in a small town. Try preaching at them the wonders of globo homo in a small town. Try drilling people in a small town on the beauties of grooming, right? See how far down the road you get, right? So liberalism and the left, they have come to dominate our, all our institutions, right? It's not because they provide such compelling solutions to our problems, but because they very effectively suppress and discredit the free human nature that uh, small towns strive to retain. So the difference between liberals and conservatives is not the difference between secularism and liberalism, it's the difference to the degree to which Secularism and liberalism has compressed religion into a new form of secular identity that has taken on a, a religious fervor, right? You've got the whole compression of traditional religious identity into this new liberal left fervor where they decry people, you know, acting naturally, right? They, they, they decry people who speak crudely and openly, right, and still cling to their guns and religion. Right? So people in a small town may not necessarily permit themselves to be intimidated by liberal intellectualism. Right? Try coming into a small town and just try pulling that stuff. Right? Come into a small town. Try sucker punching someone on a sidewalk. Right? Try you know, pulling off a, a carjacking. Right? Come try the you know, gay lives matter, black lives matter. You know, come try that in a small town and see how you can do. Right? Like, try pulling a gun on the owner of a liquor store. Try cussing out a cop. Spit in his face. Stomp on the flag. Light it up. Desecrate everything that uh, traditional Americans hold sacred. Desecrate the cross. Desecrate the church. Desecrate Christianity. Right? You think you're tough? Well, try that stuff in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Because in a small town, people take care of their own. They're not necessarily, you know, down with this groomer agenda. All right? They're not down with being bullied, right? Cross the line in a small town. It won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. Like, try that stuff in a small town, right? People in a small town still got a gun that their granddaddy might have given them, right? So you say one day they're going to round up all the guns. Well, that stuff might fly in the city, but good luck. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road because in a small town, people take care of their own, right? So it won't take long for you to find out what happens. You try to pull that stuff in a small town, right? So to the extent that people in a small town are anti-intellectual, right? That's because they, they follow a politics of presence, a politics of, of living rather than a politics of ideas, all right? They put their traditional folkways, their traditional religion, their traditional loyalties ahead of liberal intellectualism. Right? Liberal intellectualism prizes detaching ideas and theories and laws from basic human experience. Right? That's not the traditional way of life. Right? The liberal left wants us to embrace you know, the reflexive Buffett identity and the erection of an entire social order and legal system all right? uh, on something that's completely contrary to human nature. Right? The liberal left wants our lives to be bound up by all their rules. Right? It wants everything to be legalized and conventionalized, right? They, they, want, they want total control 
They want to legislate everything. They want to remove risk, all right? They don't want heroes. They want role models, all right? People in a small town, they're willing to go to war. They don't mind some risk, and they admire heroes, all right? People in a small town, all right, they, they seek and they welcome drama. They prefer times of war and conflict and risk, right? Yeah, they might be a little insistent. They might be a little intolerant of Globo Homo, right? They might be willing to take a stand. They might not be down with surrendering, Right? They may not want to be plowed, all right? They may not be down with you coming into their public spaces, public parks, public lavatories, and hooking up with random gay sex and scrolling your, your phone number on there and talking about how much you love to give head to strangers, right? It, they, they may not be down with the whole liberal left routine, right? They may not buy into you know, the reflexive liberal left ideal that we shouldn't get excited and we should discourage manliness and toxic masculinity, right? So traditional masculinity is the antithesis of the buffered, reflexive, distant, ordering impulses of the liberal left, right? Masculinity at its deepest level is a protest against all these liberal left, buffered, rationalizing, reflexive forces of the modern world, against the peculiar nature of courtly rationality, a rationality that is hostile not just to, to fighting and to contests of swords and guns, but to the entire range of traditional virtues and identities that uh, most people for hundreds of years have built their lives around. Yeah, so come, come into a small town and uh, see, see how far you get. Try, try pulling that, that groomer stuff in a small town. See how far down the road you get. He's saying, 40, what is a secular guru? Of modernity. And it's those, there's the fissures and paranoias um, and alienation that's going on in modernity. And secular gurus um, can, can capitalize on that. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just foreshadowing, Chris, our theme of anti-establishmentarianism. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. So, um, well, one thing I think to mention here as well, and this is something which people always struggle with, is that when you are defining a category or a tribe, for example, <laughs> there, there can be individuals who do not fit neatly into the uh what's that word whenever you have the the kind of prototypical figure right so you might set uh, a bunch of characteristics that are defining of the group or the kind of person that would be in the group and then you will find that various people uh, related to a group you know embody those features more or less right but there is no group where there's no divergence amongst members and everyone is a prototypical example because that yeah, would be that. i am a person with brown hair right like these are all overlapping categories okay, um yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know we, we got that that's not, oh. not all of them are what <laughs> that's right so the mere fact that we're covering someone does not entail that we think they're a guru it entails that we're going to check them out listen to what they have to say have some fun talking about them and maybe rate them on the barometer as well so I, I'd, I'd add just a little note there as well matt that part of that was part of the reason that this developed was when we were initially covering people we were basing our approach on this kind of secular guru concept that we had, but we covered people that were suggested and that we were interested in, but we very quickly noticed that people were varying to their degrees to which they fit the template. And um, by us covering them on a show called Decoding the Gurus, there's an implicit uh, suggestion that the people that we cover are gurus of some stripe or another. Um, and we developed the grometer, which we'll, we'll talk about in more detail, but um, before we get there, just we developed a system in order to say that there are it's a spectrum and there are people who are closer to this concept and people who are far lower. yeah 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 we know about life on the spectrum bloody hell be with them dislike them but they wouldn't score highly because they might be okay that's boring okay let, let's get to the good stuff care about okay All right here's some good stuff from matt brown from australia university of central queensland but they don't do the kind of secular guru things and this is a thing which people constantly seem to not entirely grasp yeah 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 true and uh, yeah, so we are interested in a thing called discriminant validity, which is to make sure that our concept, you know, is specific to the thing that we care about. And is and and while we know it's got some, you know, Venn diagrammatic overlap between things like public intellectuals or traditional religious leaders, political pundits, um, people like that, and like almost any academic or someone with a public profile, we we wanted to make sure that it was actually specific. So in terms of people that we're interested in covering, willing to cover, we we cover that whole that whole joint um, what union of of all of those Venn diagrams. That, um, but only some of them will actually. Um, be part of that subset of secular gurus and you know most of the properties that we'll talk about in terms of the barometer of these secular gurus you know are there are you know it has a negative kind of balance to it i suppose not not every characteristic of it is negative but 
you know, I think we generally feel that it's um, it's intrinsically unhelpful in <laughs> in uh, in a in society that we live on live in to I guess to, to claim the mantle of that kind of secular intellectual authority, but to be actually doing something quite different, basically, you know, a- appealing to to other kinds of um, uh, motivations or um, uh, what am I trying to think of? <laughs> trying to, you know, when, where their appeal is based on on other things apart from, you know. Okay, so these two academics, Matt Brown and Chris Kavanaugh, kind of they embody moderate liberal left, you know, care 